I've wanted to be an astronaut since I was eight years old, when my second grade class flew tomato plants on the space shuttle to compare how well the plants grew on Earth versus in zero gravity. Ever since then, almost every decision I've made, even as far as the hobbies I've pursued, was made with that goal in mind. I started flying airplanes in high school, studied aerospace engineering in college. Then I went to work for a startup company that was building a rocket plane to take tourists to the edge of space. When that company went under, I went back to grad school to continue my studies in rocket propulsion. Grad school gave me some time to pause and reflect on the path I'd chosen. And I began to develop this nagging feeling that maybe I wasn't as engaged with my work as other people. The people I worked with thought about rockets and spacecraft all the time, even in the shower, we joked. I think this is a good measure of your interest, what you think about in the shower or while you're doing other routine tasks that let your mind wander. I increasingly found myself thinking about scheming up ways to get out into the wilderness to put myself in challenging environments. More importantly, I started to think more deeply about the skills and personal qualities that explorers embody, and less about the boxes I would need to check in order to become an astronaut. After a lot of angst throughout grad school, I, made, I took what at the time seemed like the big risk. I applied and got a job as a research technician in Antarctica. I chose Antarctica because it seemed like the closest thing on Earth to being an astronaut. The plan was to spend a year at the South Pole, experiencing six months of total darkness and living and working with 40 other people in a small research station. To me, the risk was only as far as my career as an engineer. Personally, I felt like I had no choice. The risk in not having this experience was far greater than the risk of any professional setback. Before I deployed, I needed to work, so in the meantime, I accepted a position at Woods Hole Oceanographic, in Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution as a mechanical engineer. There, I discovered that I could still do engineering, which I loved, and also spend long periods of time in the sea, working, working at sea on research vessels. Right away, I got sucked into a major upgrade to the human-occupied research submersible, Alvin. This would end up thwarting my plans to go to Antarctica and taking nearly four years of my life. In the spring of 2013, we were in the final assembly of the sub before she was due to leave Woods Hole in May of that year. Everyone was working long hours, uh, weekends too. We had started with a bare frame in September, installed the new personnel sphere, a six foot diameter titanium sphere on the frame, and we're slowly repopulating the sphere in the frame with all of the remaining subsystems. One weekend in particular stands out in my mind. It was a beautiful spring weekend outside, but I was sitting underneath the sphere installing some pressure housing mounts I had designed. This was me for nearly two days solid. I was crawling around underneath the sphere, in and out of the frame, fitting up parts, drilling holes, redrilling holes, feeling in turn despair when parts didn't fit and delight when they did. At the time, this didn't seem like a particularly memorable weekend. In fact, it was buried in a kind of a rough couple weeks where nothing seemed to be going right. I was physically exhausted, only getting a couple of hours of sleep every night, eating my meals out of vending machines, and constantly under the pressure of delivering what I said I'd deliver. However, looking back on it now, in hindsight, I think, man, that was awesome. I was working with this team of people who were both coworkers and friends, and we were going flat out on a project we all believed in. It was really some of the best times I ever had at work. More personally, working extreme hours like that to accomplish something gives you a certain mental fortitude, a confidence that you can handle anything that comes your way. Knowing you can call on this resolve when needed is an amazing source of confidence. The same day the sub left Woods Hole, I left for another research cruise with another vehicle called Nereus. I was serving as a mechanical technician, filling the vehicle up with oil in between dives, repairing parts, basically part of the pit crew. The crew's objectives were to search for new hydrothermal vents along the mid-Cayman Rise near Jamaica. Hydrothermal vents are fissures on the seafloor where hot water spews up from below Earth's crust. 
These vent sites are home to vibrant communities of microbes and other sea life that feed off the chemicals dissolved in the heated water. One night at dinner, I had a chance conversation with an astrobiologist in the science party about his work. He researches life forms on other planets. It turns out that the hydrothermal vent sites we were exploring are similar to the environments believed to exist on one of Jupiter's moons, Europa, underneath a deep, icy ocean. By studying these hydrothermal vents, as well as other extreme environments on Earth, scientists are seeking to understand how life might develop and survive on other planets. By understanding this, scientists and engineers can develop the tools needed to search for them. This isn't particularly new stuff, but it was new to me. All of a sudden, this connection between space exploration and ocean exploration was revealed. The idea of extraterrestrial ocean exploring robots got wedged in my mind. About a year passed before I found my opportunity. I'd posted an article about the Near East crews on Facebook, and an old coworker got in touch with me to see if I would be interested in working on a similar project. I said okay, and was hired as a contractor for a company called Stone Aerospace to design mechanical components for another vehicle they were developing called Artemis. Artemis is an autonomous vehicle designed to swim underneath McMurdo ice shelf in Antarctica and collect data about the ice and water and microbiology there. Artemis and her team are down in Antarctica right now, um, just beginning initial testing. I received this photo two days ago. Um, shows the vehicle getting ready for it, one of its initial deployments through the ice. Artemis is part of a larger NASA-funded project that has the objective to characterize ice ocean systems and develop the techniques to explore them as a proxy for future Jupiter Icy Moons missions. Artemis herself won't go to Antarctica, but she's helping us develop the tools and techniques for the vehicle that will. I'm just starting to explore this intersection between ocean and space science, and I don't know where it'll take me. Antarctica? Mars? Following a vision or a goal is a series of small steps, each one providing the opportunity to learn the technical skills and hone the personal qualities you'll need along the way. Some of these steps may cause you to suffer, but the trade-off of that suffering is that you'll learn what you're capable of. The decision to stray from a promising career in propulsion wasn't easy, and it had doubts, and I thought it was a little risky. But in the end, it had a huge payoff because it led me to this line of work I find incredibly exciting. I was only able to make this decision because I spent a lot of time alone thinking critically about my life and dissecting from that what I truly value. When you do this, finding the courage to act on your thoughts, on your own ideas, becomes easier because your action is grounded in having thought through everything for yourself. You make your journey your own. I've learned to trust myself and also to appreciate every step I take while I'm taking it. There's a lot of joy in this because you relax once you realize that all of life is a process of learning and discovery, not a destination to be reached. Thank you.